good morning, everyone. It's another Friday and it's Survival of the Fittest, the webinar from Crunchfish. And it's, uh, well, it's not a sunny day yet. Uh, I'm sitting actually in, uh, in uh, Blekinge Skärgård, if you want to Google that up. But I'm, uh, so <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit, uh, well, well, I'm all my friends around the Baltic, in the middle of the Baltic Sea, you could say. So uh, uh, there's where I'm sitting, and today where I have a wonderful panel joining in, but also, uh, of course, the man, the myth, the one and only Joachim Samuelsson. Good morning to you. Good morning, Johan. How are you? Or, I'm fine. Or is it is it good lunch, or what do I say? Uh, sort of, uh, maybe a uh, good day now, sort of, in the middle of the day, sort of, or it's, it's, uh, it's coming up to uh, 11.30 here in India. I'm yes. in Bangalore or Bengaluru, as they say it here in India. So, uh, why are you in Bengaluru? Well, I have a, I have a uh, road trip here in India. Uh, I was in Delhi on Monday. Uh, we opened um, uh, our accelerator program with T-Hub at the Swedish Embassy on Monday. Over to Mumbai, I had some uh, good sort of uh, meetings with uh, prospective customers and then... Uh, we're here on the invitation of the Indian Central Bank uh, in, uh, wow. in Bangalore. Yeah, let's let's talk more about that just uh, well soon. But first of all, I'd like to introduce the uh, our panelists and also our presenter, Jaran Lindel, uh, the Crunchfish Chairman and CEO of Cool Spring Invest. Good morning. Good Jaran. morning to you. Good morning. Are you in India? Well, I'm not. I'm uh, actually in the middle of nowhere, uh, and that would be my house uh, on the countryside, Lindalen, close to Ray Mira. You uh, <laughs> probably never heard of it, but that's where I am. Yeah. So, well, you're most welcome. And then we have Susan Hannestad, Crunchfish board member and CEO of FinTech Mundi. Is that, did I get it right? You got it right. <laughs> okay. But so we have in the Baltic Sea, in the middle of nowhere, and also in Bengaluru. So where are you then today? I'm in Davos. I've been uh, speaking uh, at an uh, event uh, here. Uh, during yeah, the small, the, the, yeah, small, yeah. The, the small event. Is the, it the, the small, small event, event, yes. Yeah, yeah. The small event, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm very glad that you all participated uh, today because we will talk about governance. That's the, well, that's the theme. Uh, and we'll talk about how to be, well, uh, as board members and, and uh, the chairman of the board, how do you look at things when it comes to Crunchfish and, and the future? But back to India, so just tell us about your, your week. Uh, uh, has it been satisfying, you working? Yes, very much so. Uh, I love, I, love, I really love India. Uh, I think it's a wonderful place to be. Uh, being in payments, as we are with our digital cash solution, this is the place to be. Uh, the action is, is happening here. Uh, by far the number one market in the world when it comes to real-time payments. And uh, the plans they have for the future is just staggering. Uh, you know, uh, they're talking about uh, soon having one billion transactions per day, which is, uh, you know, it's just huge. Yeah. And, uh, it's just great to be here in the middle of the action. So what, uh, the middle of the action and the middle of nowhere. That's the, the, the webinar today. <laughs> so what about your well? So what about your welcoming? Are you a big star there? Or do the children gather and sing songs about? Uh, no, I. No, there's no signs of that. No <laughs> signs of that whatsoever. <laughs> uh, but but I, Gagan, as you've met a few times, he he's uh, going around and saying I'm the the offline man. Uh, you know that. Yeah. Coined the last webinar, so uh, he's using yeah. that. He's using that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good name. The offline man could be uh, some kind of Hollywood production in, in a couple of years. The offline man. Okay, so we will talk about uh, governance. That's the thing. Is that a, we were talking? About, is that a good uh, well word for the day? Uh, what Jaran, Do you think that's that's the right way of the right angle? No. <laughs> <laughs> But, but I, I think it's fair to say that we are at least going to talk about uh, governing uh, business development. That would be fair. Okay, let's go for that. So, uh, and as you know, if you've, if you've uh, watched this um, webinar before, you know you have the, where we will have a presentation about 15, 20 minutes or so. And then there will be a, a discussion among the panelists. And then uh, within the hour, we are ending this, and you have the opportunity to 
ask questions. So use the chat forum for that um, uh, for that case. So if you have any any thoughts, any any questions, please write them there, and I will be glad to pass them on. No, so it's time for you, Jaren, to give the presentation. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, go for it. Okay, so here's the title, uh, Strategic Business Development Platform. That's, that's actually what I'm going to talk about. But that's part of governance, even though it's not strictly governance as you might perceive it normally. So flip to the next slide. I think whatever kind of business you're doing, you have to have a certain perspective. You actually need to have several perspectives. And, and what this uh, try, what I'm trying to illustrate with this picture is that uh, you have at least four different perspectives, starting from <clears throat> number one, where you have the purpose of your business, the mission, if you will. But the, the mission needs a direction. That's where uh, the next uh, comes in. And that will be number two, the vision. You need to know where you're heading and, and, and why. The number three would be a holistic perspective on what you're doing and in what context you're doing it. And number four would be the tactics and operations to succeed. And if you do the back costing, you will be able to define different milestones along the way. But regardless of what you're doing, you need to understand the why, why we're doing this, that's linked to the vision, what we're doing and how we're doing, that's linked to the tactics and, and operations. And normally when you do a SWOT, <clears throat> you look at strength, weakness, possibilities and threats, um, opportunities and threats, you don't uh, distribute those along the timeline. Your immediate potential is actually related to your strength and your immediate threats are related to your weakness. So your short-term desired position should be defined by that. And then you elaborate on, well, the long-term uh, opportunities and, and threats that you need to tackle along the way. So this is trying to illustrate that you need to define the SWOT along the timeline to be efficient, I would say, because SWOT could also be an abbreviation of seldom works over time. So let's go to the next slide. If, if there are, I mean, we are living in a rapidly changing world. So the SWOT that you do, strength, weakness, opportunity, and threats will vary uh, over, over time. And that will depend on, on different scenarios. So basically you are to strive towards change readiness, I would say, ability to adapt and influence. And if you look at the uh, axis on the left-hand side, we have had you know, financial crisis, COVID crisis, war in Ukraine and so forth. And that will impact the, uh, the world that, that we live in. And there was a recession or close to a recession following the, the uh, COVID. Uh, and there were, you know, supply chains breaking down. So depending on scenarios, if you be, believe in a rapid economy reco uh, recovery or slow, that will present us in a different scenarios. If you believe in the global economy, the return of the global economy despite supply chains breaking down, that will constitute another scenario, whereas a more local, regional uh, supply chain would be presenting both other threats and opportunities. So you need to ask yourself the five questions on the right-hand side. What is happening? Why does it happen? What and how does it influence us? What will happen? And what decision do we need to take based on this outlook? So next slide. I mean, there are different layers if you do the global outlook <laughs> that will um, set the prerequisite, set the stage for your business. If you look at the mic mac macro environment uh, awareness, you need to understand what, what's the impact of climate change, geopolitical change, lack of resources and pan pandemics and so forth. What, trends and, and, and sudden events that will impact basically everybody. 
And then you have the near environment awareness. You need to understand your, your market, where the demand is, where the pain points are, what kind of resources and availabilities there are, and, and what does the competition look like, and, and all that that you normally sort of assess when you look at your potential market and actual market. Then you have the micro, the micro perspective, and that is your actual business. Is it profitable? Does it grow? How do we re to redefine our offer to be uh, competitive and so forth? What about our productivity, quality, and all those aspects? And if you look at the, once again, the SWOT from this perspective, where's our strength? Where's our weakness? How do we address them? And long-term to reach our vision, where's our opportunities and, and how do we handle the threats along the way? And, and that might sound a bit pretentious, but if, if we simplify things, we need to ask ourselves four these different questions. What shall we continue doing? What do we need to stop doing? What should we start doing? And what do we not know what to do about? So we park that for now. If you can do that on a regular basis, you are getting closer to being uh, change ready, if you will. Next slide. So once again, <clears throat> they are, the influencing factors come from micro, near, and, and macro, my, near, and, and micro, uh, and actually yourself, the, the influencing factors. So if, if, if the world is changing very rapidly, <clears throat> do we apply a yearly budget to be successful and then do the follow-up early next year? Or do we have a more frequent uh, scenario analysis. And, and what we have been implementing at Graniter, that's actually four three times a year, every four months, we do a new scenario. A new scenario means that we uh, get all the input you could possibly imagine and assess those. And in order to do that in a meaningful way, you at least need to have a minimum set of uh, competences. And that's what uh, you see in the lower uh, left hand, on the low left hand side. The kind of competences that are, are minimum required in, in, in your competence puzzle on, on any business, I would say. <clears throat> that's leadership competence. You need to understand your business, the actual industry you're uh, working in, and the technology and methods that could apply to make you successful. So once again, flip to the next slide. So if you look at a traditional organization chart, there are different layers <clears throat> and there seem to be more or less waterproof ceilings between those layers. <clears throat> and that's what we have experienced, not necessarily the best way to go. Because the, the, uh, the boss, if you will, the man on top or the woman on top does not necessarily get in contact with reality. What's happening on the play field? What's happening on the market? How is the customer reacting to our installers, uh, well, deliveries and so forth? Because that's being a, a, a fronted by others than yourself. You, go, you don't get the... the free flow of information. And, and some of those that are actually to execute and deliver on your promises, they are not in contact with the strategies and tactics that you believe to be applied as a boss. And you have the middle layer where sometimes sub-optimization and blocking of unfavorable information and, and so forth comes into play. And the blame game if, if, if something goes wrong. So we've tried to tilt the organization chart. So on the right-hand side, you see a, a simplified version of, of uh, what we apply in, in Graniter. <clears throat> you basically need to uh, have a horizontal uh, line of, or chain of commands. I don't really like that word, but you, you, you need to have a horizontal, we put it a horizontal arrow where the left represent top management, if you will, but we don't use top. We the, the ones that primarily work with strategy. And the, the more you move to the right, you more, the more action there is, you, the more execution there is. So on the right-hand side, you have the players on the field. The left hand is primarily uh, supposed to 
support and facilitate the abilities of and, and the capacities of the players on the field. And if, if we have this done the right way, there is a free flow of, of information. And to secure that, as I said, we do a, a scenario analyst where everybody's um, findings comes into play on, on a, a, a three times a year basis. So uh, regardless of where you are in the air, there's always somebody to cover your back, to put it that way. Next slide. Okay, this is a business slide, <clears throat> but this is also, in essence, uh, the uh, way we put all things together. If you look at the... Uh, holistic perspective do we have the right structural capital are we uh, applying the right strategies we have strategies from uh, very various angles market and business management and organization culture method and technology communication and branding development and follow-up we have to have a certain strategy for each of those items but when you start delivering or when you start selling, actually, you need to make sure that the offer that you're presenting to the market is fit for the customer target group that, that you have in, in, in mind. And, and so do you have the right target group, the right kind of business or offering and conditions to deliver it successfully? And the other three rights, we call it six plus three plus three rights. You need to be able to start uh, an in project the right way and, and implement and, and close it, it the right way, which might be quite obvious, but that takes some, you know, preparation and, and a mindset set to make sure that that always happens. And if you look at the, uh, um, the, the lower part of the slide, <clears throat> do we have the right human capital? I'd say that what is needed is a culture where you trust, Trust is of essence because trust uh, allows responsibility. Responsibility uh, renders trust and you have sort of a positive spiral going on. And another prerequisite to get that going is for each and every member of your team to understand the why, the what and how, and to have the, let's call it, combined leverage of the set of competences that you have made sure that you got in the team. Left-hand side, okay, what's your, what's your mission? Do we have the, the right mission to align with the purpose where we can be competitive? And if you do the assessments of all these aspects uh, three times a year, and you ask yourself, what do we continue with? What do we start with? What do we start? Uh, stop and what do we park you actually get uh, some some uh, some uh, fringe benefits if you will because uh, there there will be um, all the red alerts will be shown in such a process and all the low hanging fruits will also be obvious so you can make changes along a, a year that would sort of far by far exceed what you normally see when you have annual budget. So this is a way of describing our process to make that happen. Last slide. Now, <clears throat> Crunchfish has also applied this. Uh, starting with an ID, you do the iteration, you get to a product, you do the iteration, you conclude that the, we're, we're better off with the platform. That's a more relevant offer to the market. Even though we had all the components in place, it was a certain point in time we realized when doing this iteration that we got all the capacities needed to offer the market the platform. So for every, I mean, Having all the <clears throat> components, there was only a small marginal effort to more or less uh, present a major impact that would optimize the risk to the reward of the company. So once again, if you have learned nothing else from this little slideshow, ask yourself every now and then, 
based on all the findings and input that you get, what shall we continue with or start with, stop with, or what can we do nothing about for the moment and park? So that's it. Well, that was great. Thank you so much, Joran. Thank you. Uh, so let's um, use this as a starting point for our discussion. And you uh, <clears throat> and uh, we will talk about this presentation uh, and put it into a, a crunchfish perspective, I would say. So, Joran, uh, let's let's start with you then. Um, well, you are involved in many companies, and if you compare Crunchfish, uh, how you corporate, well, uh, the governance compared to other companies, uh, what, well, what would you say will be the uniqueness? I think the uniqueness of Crunchfish is their actual ability to be agile. You know, everybody wants to be agile, but Crunchfish has an ability to. <laughs> To adapt uh, and uh, that whereby uh, small efforts, as I said, will, would generate a much more valuable offer. So having that sort of iteration carried out on a regular basis and also being able to implement the conclusion of each, each iteration is, is fairly unique. So many are trying, but they have succeeded. Well, we, Crunchfish, have succeeded in that. Yeah, and but but also since I, I realized also during these months and by knowing you, Akim, and the others, uh, the, well, they're quite inventive and, <laughs> and agile and plenty of ideas. What? How does that affect your work? Uh, well, within the the board, because then then it, <laughs> then it, you you will need to have board members who are able to 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 uh, adapt to that. Yes. Well, I. I... You have to be open-minded <laughs> to start with, but uh, either you are working on mitigating any risks or you are addressing opportunities and, and potential. And you have to balance that, of course, but it's been quite obvious uh, on every occasion where we made a sh slight shift in strategy, that those changes are, are based on sound assumptions. So you don't do it, we don't do anything on a whim. There is actually a proper analysis behind it. And also, you know, all the macro trends and assumptions on, on a global outlook perspective comes into play in what somebody on the job is doing on Monday. It, it, it's sort of, it's linked together. And that's, I think, is is of high significance in order to be successful. Yeah, uh, Susan, being a, a board member in in Crunchfish, uh, how how is that? That is a very good, uh, very uh, creative um, atmosphere and agile, as uh, Joran is uh, is uh, saying. Um, I think uh, what uh, Crunchbase is really, really good at uh, is uh, to, to see into the long term and then uh, being very effective at uh, starting uh, doing it. So the execution part, uh, in addition to what uh, Jöran is uh, saying, is, is very good. Uh, it's very good discussions, good trust, and all uh, the things that uh, Joachim and his uh, team is, is uh, doing is with uh, high energy, a lot of fun, uh, humor, uh, but they have tons of experience uh, doing it. Uh, Joachim is a serial entrepreneur, so he, he knows uh, what he's uh, doing. And then all the people in Crunchbase is very good. Extremely tech savvy. I'm, I'm impressed of the tech sa savviness. And then dare to go uh, international, uh, India, Southeast uh, Asia. It's, it's a good, uh, a good uh, path, uh, I think. Uh, working international with uh, fintechs, uh, I think this is a, a super, super way. But then the agility to adjust over time, I think is, is very unique. Uh, and, so, and, and, like and just, why, why, why do you look this grumpy after all this flatter? Oh, <laughs> you need, uh, you need I, to I, put I'm a smile here, on your face. Uh, I don't know, maybe jet lag <laughs> is still there. Sorry, you're on. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so uh, I'm just thinking, uh, are, there, are there any problems with well, the ability to adapt, the ability being creative, could you, you become 
too well too far ahead for the for the market uh, being that curious being that inventive uh, Suzanne? Yeah, that, that is, is, is the balance. Uh, to scale, uh, you need uh, investment, uh, you need people, you need uh, uh, traction uh, with the companies. And so you're uh, getting income and then you can grow further. So it, it's, a, it's a balance uh, between uh, being very innovative and then... Uh, but that's the other thing I think uh, Crunchbase is uh, doing. Now. So they, uh, they see the market uh, and uh, the board is uh, helping them see the market. Uh, and then to, to match that uh, with the technology and the product that is, uh, this, yeah. is a, this is this is a moving target in the market. Yeah, Very I, I agree. We could probably go for smaller fishes. Uh, but we're, we're going for the big fish. Uh, that's uh, the uh, sort of platform approach. We could have had products out on the market. We could have had a, well, a bigger revenue stream based on that, but we would not have at the same time, we would limit our potential in, in terms of the full strength of our vision where we're going to be, uh, well, at the, the, the end game, so to say. Yeah. So, so let's talk about the big fish, uh, because uh, the grumpy man, uh, the grumpy off, offline man, uh, <laughs> <laughs> since, since you're in India, in Bangalore, and, uh, and there's a reason for that, and you just told us... To, some things about it, and and you have some news to tell us from India. So go ahead, uh, Joachim. Well, well, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, we, we had a, a, a big launch uh, at the Swedish embassy on Monday. Uh, that was nice. Uh, we we um, that that got gathered quite quite a uh, prestigious people there uh, listening in on the program we're going to do with T Hub. Uh, in the middle of the week, it was uh, we, we got in a, uh, the clearance sort of from uh, our administrator here in India that our subsidiary, uh, Crunchfish India Private Limited, is now uh, registered. So that's up yeah. and running. And that was actually quite important. I, I did present for the central bank. And, 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 that, and that, that is today's news. It just yeah, we we, uh, we 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 didn't put it as a um, you know uh, what's called Mar news that uh, but 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 it, but so we, we 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 kept it for today uh, given that it was a public holiday yesterday in Sweden, uh, but we announced it uh, this morning um, and and it's um, I think it's important uh, as, as I said yesterday I presented for the Indian Central Bank uh, and. Uh, I spoke to some of our partners here and, and they are sort of saying that the Indian Central Bank and also the government are pushing hard that uh, they really don't want to really do business with, uh, with entities who are not Indian. So un unless you have an Indian subs um, subsidiary or establishment, they, uh, uh, yeah, it would be much harder. So I think this enables uh, a lot of uh, the discussions with uh, the government sector and certainly the Central Bank. So I, I think it was really great that we had this, uh, it was sort of a, registered on Wednesday and I presented yesterday uh, and it was good to say it, it's not establishing but it's established it's registered yeah that was good uh, I, I, I'm yeah. happy it, it's uh, in all reports uh, people are talking about that the um, uh, growth in the next phase will be coming from government initiatives and uh, policies and uh, the central banks who are yeah they're, they're, they're driving innovation in the market as well which is interesting yeah. and, and I think it's quite uh, well since well, uh, since we've been do, we've been doing these webinars. Well, you started last year, and I I came on board in well late January uh, January, and then uh, you had the T Hub. Uh, they they got along and they they saw uh, one of the webinars, and now you're very much involved in a, in a partnership. In a, in a, I think that's a good story of 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 how you're being very alert and and ready to go. Uh, is it is it hard to to cope with that as as board members? Things are happening all the time. Uh, could it go, go too fast, or is it just well, go ahead? It's it's we have to be the front runner, so we, we will follow you. What's what's your thoughts, Jan? I love it. <clears throat> uh, I mean, we're not. If, if you do the same day, thing today as you did yesterday, you will get the same results tomorrow. We do different things every day and we're progressing. So uh, I, I love it. Yeah, and uh, Susan, you have the same feeling? Absolutely. Uh, you have to look at uh, the context. Uh, being very digital on one side and being into a so-called uh, conservative uh, 
uh, industry with the financial uh, services, which is uh, changing quite a quite a lot uh, as we go. So then to yep. be in the forefront, uh, in the forefront, uh, I think it's is uh, the place uh, to be. So I just love it. <laughs> Lovely. So uh, I'm thinking uh, most of the Fridays we have these webinars. We're very much into well, we can hear quite technical descriptions of the company. So. So, if you use other words from a board perspective, how would you well? Uh, how would the 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 company's vision look like uh, if you don't go, come from the from the techie perspective, uh, Jan? Well, <clears throat> the the criteria for us to invest into any entity is that we believe that it will make the world a better place. So, all these the the, the aspects of financial inclusions that will be facilitated by the uh, the platform that that Crunch is is, is offering to the market that's uh, important to us, but I believe that we can change the, the way of, of of handling payments all over the world in a favorable way that everybody will will actually benefit from. Also, those people that are ne not necessarily hooked up with the internet every day and all the time. So, financial inclusion is is important to us. And anything you want to add there, uh, Susan? Uh, payment uh, has uh, two two sides. Uh, it's it's the the buyer and then the uh, the provider of uh, the goods. The link between those uh, two payment either online all the way uh, or uh, offline half of it or all uh, all offline. This is the critical uh, part. Everything that payments uh, has uh, to do with is uh, the machinery for the world. It's kind of the blood pump uh, that is going through. To make that as seamless, as uh, efficient, as uh, user-friendly as uh, possible, that's the key for uh, Crunchfish. Yeah, and and you talked about, uh, well, in your presentation, yeah, um, you, you, well, as a SWOT uh, well, analysis and strengths and weaknesses and, and the short term and the long term. And also, uh, the, when it comes to strengths and weaknesses, it's, it's more about the, the internal factors so, so how do you maximize your benefits, the, the benefits of strength and, and minimize the weakness and, and, the, and what are they? Uh, let's go with, uh, let's start with uh, uh, Susanne this time. So what are the weaknesses and how do you cope with them? And, and also what are the strengths? Uh, the strengths, uh, as I mentioned, uh, with, with the technology and, and uh, the, the go-getter uh, mentality. Uh, when you're scaling internationally, you need uh, two things. You need the capacity, meaning uh, fantastic uh, people, and, and you need the money to, to go. Those two things uh, are the one that uh, uh, is, uh, is the thing that uh, uh, Crunchfish is uh, going after. Uh, so I, I think I, I, these are the two things. And, 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 and what about the... Uh, the, since you are, you are aiming for the big, well, the big market, the big end game, and, and the weaknesses uh, to, well, to be, uh, well, hindering you from, from doing that, what, what uh, how do you cope with, the, how do you minimize the weaknesses? Uh, <clears throat> there is always a challenge if you go for the, the big end game, because <clears throat> you don't necessarily succeed in a gradual step-by-step -step procedure. So somebody somewhere needs to put sufficient trust in us in order to implement the solution that we're providing, which is pretty close to a big bang. <clears throat> so the step from nothing to the big bang is a huge step. So that's maybe the weakness of our offering. But on the other hand, with this agile team that based on you know high tech excellence and so forth has something very unique to offer. Steps like these have been taken before and we're going to take this step. Yeah. And then so, with, so, yeah. with, with the partnership, uh, that is a good way uh, to um, kind of minimize uh, that you're, you're not having the, the full capacity in-house. Uh, and that's another uh, thing that uh, Crunchbase has done uh, in a tremendous uh, good uh, way to, to get all kinds of uh, partners all over the world. Yes, uh, Southeast Asia is, is the key uh, market uh, with it. So, so then you can move forward uh, um, and then succeed. Yeah, and, and you also mentioned the, the threats and opportunities. And, and you, you mentioned in your presentation also climate change, pandemic, war, uh, and we don't really recognize our, our world. Well, as it will, 
just used to be a, a year ago or, or a couple of years ago. So, so how do you plan then? What kind of plan can you have under well, those yeah. circumstances? <clears throat> That's the thing. You have a overall an overall game plan. You have a vision, and you, of course you have milestones. But in order to be successful, you need to be somewhat flexible and always optimize the risk reward as you go and that's why it's so important that that's why I stressed on the fact that you need to do the iteration what to continue with start with stop with and so forth on on, on a frequent basis and, and if you succeed in doing that in a meaningful way you are much better off you are not only ready for change you might actually be able to drive the change yeah uh, you yeah, Kim, how do you well, um, use the knowledge and the perspectives within the board uh, when you're well, out there uh, inventing stuff and, and having all the meetings uh, and going to Bangalore. It's, well, it's great saying that. I love, love, love the word Bangalore. So, Bangalore. So, uh, it's Bangalore. Bangalore. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> but I love, I love Bangalore even more, actually. <laughs> Bangalore. <laughs> Bangalore, sorry. So, so... Uh, in what way can you can the, the the board help you getting the well the right goals here? Well, the, the board helps any sort of I think company it should help any company with the strategic thinking. Uh, and and I, th I think we have a, a mind share uh, at the board uh, with uh, where we're moving with the company. Uh, the, the, the the sort of the, the, that vision as you are describing his first slide. I think it was that we, we we are aiming for the sort of the end game, the big game. Uh, we we are that, that's what we're aiming for. And um, then we, uh, you know, in the operational part of a company, we we execute and we we do steps all the time. And um, I think I think Joran put it well. Um, within an organization, you need to have trust, and that, with that kind, of, with that that builds up people take responsibility. I I think that there is that trust and responsibility between the board and the executional team. So, for me, um, I'm also part of the board, but I'm I am um, I I'm, I think the the use of the board, I think from a, a CEO perspective, is is really that you have them as a sounding board, uh, and uh, you, you you discuss those. Uh, Things we 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 just started discussing sort of the Indian subsidiary. That was uh, that that's a strategic move uh, to be in India as with a, uh, with a subsidiary. First one we've ever done sort of abroad, uh, and uh, we um, we discussed that. It was probably uh, so six months ago. Uh, it was approved by the board uh, that when the time was right, then we could set it up. And then now it, it has has actually taken a, a month or so to set it up because uh, it was quite. Uh, quite a lot of things to fill in and uh, and do but um, you know and but but it's it is the uh, execution along a um, towards a vision uh, and um, then you can if there are big moves like setting up a subsidiary or uh, you know changing a product direction you you do discuss it but um, overall I think we are in line uh, we, we, we the operational part and the board and then um, then you discuss things which are of certain scale so, so so because I think then the board is entitled and should know and, and we should sound that off with the board and, and we have that uh, regular sort of uh, discussions um, yeah. Yeah. yeah and and if I might add to that I think Obviously, there are hygiene factors for, for the boards to, to carry out, and that would be the control and monitoring aspects of, you know, you're being ultimately responsibility, responsible for all the activities within the company. But I think that it's most uh, crucial that, that uh, a, uh, a board can offer strategic guidance and, and, and uh, you know, sounding to, and also sanity checks along the way. So that creates a, a creat creative atmosphere where good business ideas are pressure tested, that not yeah. discarded. And then, then those that are not filtered away can actually be implemented in real life. But how, how hard is it to be at well sitting in, the, in the, within the board uh, because this is well this is a totally new well area uh, the, the digital cash area offline payments and uh, is, is it tricky because you you are definitely going into to in, a new well a new world if, if this will 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 be uh, as you ho are hoping and you're aiming for and this will be a major success it's it's quite tricky to well Navigate, I believe. Uh, Susan, um, how is it to be a board member? 
Yeah, uh, I, I really no, he's leaving. He's leaving. He's leaving. He's leaving. Yeah, exactly. No, no, we can talk about him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just uh, adding on to, to what uh, Jöran is uh, is uh, saying, yes, uh, uh, sounding board and discussion partner and, and so forth. And I also think uh, the board is good at uh, probing uh, into uh, to the, the good ideas, sometimes uh, crazy ideas. So then you probe uh, into it, just putting it into the context, uh, have you looked at this, have you looked at that, and, and uh, so forth. So it's very open, uh, trustworthy discussions. Uh, and uh, we we can't uh, we can put the, the finger in the side and, and okay uh, are we sure this is uh, the right uh, direction on, on this uh, topic, uh, but that yeah. goes with the, the discussion. So we are um, good people in in the administration and good people in the, the board. When you have this uh, trust and good uh, discussions, uh, uh, one plus one is uh, more than two uh, after a discussion. Yeah, mm -hmm. and how do you well? Uh, What's your role here as a, as a chairman? Uh, well, you have to 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 be well. Uh, well, you 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 have to be on board and understanding the situation. Well, more than most of the people. So how do you how do you get, gather the information? How do you, how can you be uh, uh, well a good partner in this? <clears throat> well, first of all, we talk to each other. We we uh, me and, and you, Kim, have uh, contact on on regular basis on all minor and major things uh, and if there are challenges to our strategic assumptions those will be brought to the board's attention so and then we will have a fruitful discussion about that so it's not really tricky and and i i mean it's 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 a given it comes natural how to treat and deal with the, the challenges and opportunities along the way and for me as i said a criteria for us to invest is that the um, the, the portfolio company is actually in a position to make the world a better place, but it also every each and every of our portfolio company company has some sort of disruptive technology. We don't invest in small incremental changes. We invest into you know step technologies, disruptive technologies. So I'm very familiar with not being completely aware of what's going to happen all the time. That that's part of the uh, you know the sweetness of it yeah so uh please if you have any questions no no questions this far in the, in the chat forum uh, and i know susan you will you will have to leave uh, is it a train in davos yeah that's true yes <laughs> yeah so in well about well seven minutes or so uh, i would just um, uh, end with the question about uh, well companies they are well we, they can always be described we're in some kind of phase and we are heading into this so if you if you describe what kind of phase are uh, is, is crunch fish, uh, fish in at the moment uh, we we heard about the news from uh, india today but if you take the the phase and we we've been talking about during these webinars well the big there will happen big things hopefully quite close to now uh, so, if you describe that, what kind of phase is this, Jan? If you want to change the world, you might have to accept that it's going to take a while. So each phase is a bit longer than for you know conventional business or incremental changes. But we have, I, I think, we're in the takeoff phase. We, we, are, we got all the ducks in a row. We're ready to take off. We got our partners. We got our technology. You know, validated, and we're comfortable with it. So, but but going for the big end game, as 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 we call it, uh, will require some some you know preparatory measures that are now being carried out. So, brick by brick, we're putting this together, and 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 soon, I am I'm confident that it's going to have maybe not the big bang impact, but it's going to make a difference, a big difference soon. Yeah, and and so we're in the countdown. Ten, nine, eight, something. True. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yes. And we, it's not. Yeah, we have a problem. It's not. It's not that. It's. Uh... <laughs> well, that <laughs> happens on occasion, but so far we've been able to solve them. <laughs> okay, great. So, so if you describe the face, Susan, um, what do you? How would you put it? Take off face. 
Uh, yes, uh, take off uh, with additional uh, of, of the scaling. Since uh, this is uh, so international, uh, India is a big uh, market, uh, Southeast Asia is, is a big uh, market, uh, very populated, uh, um, a little bit different uh, when it comes to uh, yeah, uh, the context uh, coming from the, the Nordic uh, to it. So uh, all these uh, things, it's always good to, to, to start in the Nordic because then you can test out, have the product market fit uh, there and then move on to, uh, to, uh, to bigger markets like uh, India and Southeast uh, Asia uh, is. So uh, takeoff is, is a good, um, good uh, title for the phase that is uh, now with the addition of, of uh, moving into the uh, scale up uh, phase, yeah. uh, which is absolutely the, the, the most fun uh, phase to be in. So how's the countdown, uh, Joachim? Uh, the takeoff is near. Yeah, no, it's. I, I think it was a good, good way to put it uh, from Jörn and Susanna. Uh, there, there, I think takeoff is is good. Uh, I think it's. I, I think though that everybody has to realize that at the end game, you know, we we're heading for outer space. Uh, you know, we're we're not heading for uh, for Blaking and We we we're, we're heading <laughs> further than that, Jörn uh, or uh, Jörn. So I I think there will be steps along the way. There will be milestones to reach, and and one of the first milestones we, we're trying to do is to. To really get that um, um, endorsement from um, the market, uh, a big player or whoever who who really sees the potential that we see, we see potential, and and we are confident that we are uh, moving it towards um, you know uh, something big. But 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 I think it's uh, everybody's waiting for that. I think external uh, confirmation, and and then it will be. When that has come, then you look. Okay, when do you get the next one? So there will be always some. You you will be chasing things all all along here for this uh, yeah. journey to outer space. Uh, that, that's what we're hoping to to get to. So so so, 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 so so give me a date of the liftoff. When should it uh, have happened? Definitely. Can you say anything about that? Uh, that's always the hardest thing to to say. But but it's uh, it's uh, because uh, we work with big organizations. We work with big sort of and and uh, it's um, it's could be sooner than you realize but um uh, uh I, I i think it's very difficult to actually project uh, exact timings we we are in discussions uh which uh, but th then at the time when we feel we have that trigger that we are uh, and we will release that we need to uh, in a press release that something has happened and and, and that will come out uh, that's regulatory requirements but um yeah. uh, things are going well uh, all discussions in india for this week uh, uh has been uh, well uh, so it's uh, we we are brick by brick, as Jaron said. We we are okay, so, uh, preparing for uh, you know um, taking off. So it's it's more like ten, nine, eight, seven and a half, seven, soon, soon six. <laughs> well, you'll see. <laughs> you, you you you'll see uh, what, what's going to happen, uh, Jaron. But but it's okay, not uh, Jaron. We have a problem. <laughs> we that's uh, yeah. I never call Jaron when I have a problem. I, I I think that's my problem to solve. It's not Jaron's. <laughs> okay, great. So finally, uh, if you you if anything you need, any anyone anything you want to invite on board to this rocket, uh, when well, it's still time. So this is a reach out for the world. Uh, do you invite uh, who do you invite to to join you uh, on this journey uh, let's let's go around the the three of you let's start with Jan. wow and you want a serious answer to this yeah well try uh okay i i think there are um players out there that have been established and and you know well established in the business that we could offer something that would really make a difference for them. We have identified most of them. We are in contact with, we're in discussions with most of them, but I really would like them to, to, to commit to joining on this journey to outer space. And we're getting there, but they're, you know, all the guests are more or less invited already. We are okay. in discussion about when's the dinner. Okay, I see. So, Susan, before you go, any final words about who you want to invite? Uh, what you the want the to global uh, players uh, that is uh, uh, doing uh, the um, uh, regulation and the compliance uh, part. Uh, 
there's a lot uh, happening there. Uh, setting that uh, more into stone and, and uh, stepping up, that would be uh, a good way uh, for me to end this uh, fantastic uh, uh, webinar uh, together with uh, Joachim and Jöran and yourself, uh, Johan. So uh, thank you very much. I'm on my yep. way to the train. Yep. This yep. is your takeoff. So this is my takeoff, yes. <laughs> That's your takeoff. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye bye, okay. thank you. So one down, three to go. Uh, <laughs> all right. So the final words, uh, you are Kim. Uh, anything you need for for this journey? Why you all settled? Um, yeah. Well, I think we are in a phase where we need to, um, as I said, get our first uh, sort of uh, committed um, customer. Uh, that would be a bank, uh, that could be a payment service. And, and that is um, what we are very much focused on. No one else will do that for us. We are the ones that are behind this. We need to do that sort of ourselves. But we, we are also, uh, if you're on your question, who do we want to have on board? We, we are looking for uh, the ones that after that sell into banks, uh, sell into payment services uh, and govern payment services. And these are central banks, for instance. That's why we it's extremely exciting to talk to the Indian central bank, very in innovative uh, central bank, and they are driving innovation in this market because they, they, they can change things in an entire market. Uh, so they have that, that sort of power. But it's also, as Susanne say, global partners that are having a sales force all over the world. And, and if we can complement their offer, with our digital cash platform offer, they could be a channel for us in, in, into the world. So yeah. step one now, get our own, uh, we, we need to do our, our, we need to do the work to get, get it all off the ground, but then it's to replicate that business many, many times. It's great to talk to those who can affect things on a scale and that's central banks and it's uh, global partners. I, I know a guy at the spa bank in here in Blekinge, is that in, in, interesting, do you think? Well, uh, I'll, I'll let you sell to them, Joran, and uh, or, uh, Johan. You, you sell to them and uh, call me if you need any help with uh, the products. <laughs> okay. <there>. Well, <laughs> good luck on this journey. And uh, we will have, thank you so much, Joran, for participating in your presentation. It was very inspiring. And a good talk here together from all around the world uh, Östergötland, Blekinge, Davos, and Bengaluru. And now we will look at the upcoming webinars. So you are going to tell me, tell us. Yeah, well, um, it's, um, we do every, every second one is on digital cash. Uh, and the one we plan for June 3rd will be on digital cash use cases. I'm actually contemplating whether I shouldn't do the presentation I did for the central bank uh, and talk about one specific use case. And that is uh, okay. digital cash for non-mobile devices. Uh, I uh, yeah, it, it could be that, or we will we'll, uh, we'll talk in general about use cases. But that's the next one, uh, June tenth. Yep. Uh, it will be on uh, the patent portfolio that we have in gestures, and then on June seventeenth, uh, <coughs> still haven't really decided. Uh, again, we would love to have an external presenter. Uh, it, no one really committed yet uh, who we can do it with. Uh, so with that's still an open one. Then on June June twenty fourth, it's the midsummer uh, eve, uh, so we 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 won't have one. There's one of our big pu public holidays in Sweden, so I that's why I'm only posting sort of uh, three webinars here. Uh, thanks for this. Uh, it's a lovely morning now. The the sun has come up, it's risen, so it's uh, it will be a good day here. And uh, I wish you the best of luck in uh, in your summer house or what it is. It's a uh, in in uh, Östergötland. And what will you do today in Bengaluru, Joachim? Uh, today, uh, it's actually, we, 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 we actually squeezed all the meetings in yesterday that we have here. Uh, we have a gala dinner uh, together with the central bank uh, in the, uh, in the uh, evening. And we are looking forward to that one. Okay. So uh, have a nice weekend. And thanks everyone for participating. Uh, and if we don't see each other before, uh, then it will be next Friday, another webinar. So this is this was another morning with survival of the fittest. Thank you so much.